Vikram Singh, who's the head of hydrogen development, was going to talk to you today about decarbonising uh, the natural gas networks. Um, and I'll, I'll go through some of the presentation that Vikram was going to present. I've actually worked very closely with Vikram over the last several years. Um, we've been decarbonising our networks uh, for about the last five years. And I'll show you some of the projects that we've already completed and also um, some of the projects that we've got coming forward. Um, I'll explain a little bit about um, Australian Gas Infrastructure Group before we go into the slides. Um, we're, we're not selling gas per se. We're, a, we're an infrastructure group. Uh, we're principally a network um, networks business. We, we transport gas for the retailers to your door. Um, we, we are, are very uh, eager to decarbonise the networks. Um, it's happening, a renewable um, product is happening right around the country and we're, we're a big part of that. Now, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll start the slide. On the main stage right now is speaker I'll tell you a little bit about uh, Australian Gas Infrastructure Group. And before I get into that slide, I'll say that we, uh, Australian Gas Infrastructure Group is made up of the Dampier Bunbury Pipeline, um, uh, Australian Gas Networks and Multinet Gas, and I'll explain a little bit about the, that later. Um, we've got a stand here today called the Australian Gas Networks Stand, and that, that's just one of our brands, and that's a third of the Victorian network. Uh, we also have another third of the net network called Multinet Gas. So you can, as you can see there, um, we're, we're in just about every state, uh, Northern Territory, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Western Australia and South Australia. Our biggest customer base by far is uh, Victoria. We've got 1.4 million customers. This, this, this slide um, talks to our, um, our forward plan and it's a very busy plan as you can see. Um, and HYPE SA, that's Hydrogen Park South Australia. Uh, we have an electrolyzer running and um, injecting renewable gas into the network to 700 customers today with plans to go to 4,000. And through the course of uh, 21 right through to 2040, as you can see there, our aim is to be 100% renewable with 100% renewable gas running through our networks at that time and at the latest 2050. There's some interesting projects on that slide and, and you can see that um, uh, we're in there, Melbourne, everyone's familiar with Melbourne. Uh, we're looking at a couple of um, bioenergy hubs and we're looking at the injection of renewable gas into the network itself. This slide provides a little bit more detail on some of the projects you just saw on the other slide, uh, the previous slide. Um, the um, Hype SA, um, on the left, lower, um, operational online May last year. So the ball's already rolling. Um, that's a 1.25 megawatt unit. And feel free to ask any questions too while we're going through this presentation if there's something you're not clear about. Um, we've got another project in, that's uh, happening pretty soon in 2023, Hydrogen Park Gladstone and we'll be in, supplying 800 homes uh, and businesses in Gladstone. Um, and you can see Brisbane, um, probably about 2025, six um, to 100,000 customers. Wagga Wagga, Murray, Murray Valley, which is Wodonga, um, and so on. A little bit more detail here on our um, pathway. Um, Gladstone, South Australia, Hype Murray Valley, Brisbane, Melbourne. I'll tell you a little bit about um, Hydrogen Park Murray Valley, and that's that's a, an electrolyzer that will inject a 10% blend, up to 10% blend into into uh, the customers in Albury Wodonga. Um, that's a, a unique. Uh, opportunity because it's actually located, um, co-located with North East Water, a water facility, 
uh, water treatment facility. And with that electrolyzer, we'll be able to, it's like a, a, a marriage made in heaven, um, we'll be able to send what's normally uh, a byproduct of uh, production of um, hydrogen, um, send the oxygen across to the uh, northeast water to actually accelerate their production of biogas. So, and we'll inject biogas into our network as well. So, um, decarbonising the network involves a combination of hydrogen, principally, and some injection of um, biomethane created from biogas and upgraded to send into our system. This is our number one project that's actually operational right now. I was only over there a couple of weeks ago with my colleagues here, Scott and Michael, having a look at the plant. We're pretty proud of it. Um, again, supplying 700 homes. Um, We've gone through some, through some extensive uh, stakeholder engagement. The customers like it. I think most people want renewable product these days. Um, and you can see a little red truck trailer um, parked the there. The for the seminar room is from Hobbit on how to create third space in your future home. So the, the little um, truck there with the, the, the tube trailer effect that actually transports gas to um, Wyala, so we're starting to green the steel industry as well. This slide speaks to um, Hydrogen Park, Murray Valley, and um, as I said earlier, it's located on the northeast water production facility. Um, to the, just to the left there, the top left of the picture, there's an artist's impression of our electrolyzer. In session right now, in a seminar It'll be a world first blending project in terms of its outreach and design. Uh, up to 10% hydrogen blending for 40,000 customers. Again, this is a from NG. So we, we actually have a partnership to build the facility in Albury Wodonga. So we, we partnered with a French company called NG, who have a lot of experience uh, in renewables, and so they're a great partner to uh, help us deliver that project. This shows the um, uh, that we're on track for full uh, investment decision in October, so not just before the end of this month. Um, the hydrogen transmission um, pipeline license is approved. Uh, cultural heritage management plans approved. Uh, planning permit is approved. And network safety case is endorsed by government. So we're, we're pretty well on the way to do all the important things you need to do to get one of these things up and running. Um, there's also an Ausnet connection that needs to be finalised um, and Victorian government policy support. All, the, all those are, um, they're all ticks, so we're all there. Um, the purchase power agreement is finalised. Um, um, debt agreement's finalised, hydrogen sales finalised and arena agreements finalised. Now, this project was, um, there's been some assistance and we've been um, given funds from the Australian Renewable Energy Agency um, to assist uh, deliver um, a hydrogen product in Albury Wodonga, which, will, uh, which is really designed to um, get a, a hydrogen economy going in this country.
I said earlier, um, we've had some extensive stakeholder engagement um, in order to get acceptance for this project to be built in Albury Wodonga. And I can personally say that I was involved in that heavily and um, um, I'm delighted to say that there are no roadblocks from the community, including some extensive um, research and undertakings in terms of uh, industrial customers. So, you know, industrial customers were asking, will will a 10% blend of hydrogen into our network affect my product? Well, we had a lot of questions like that and we worked through it extensively and I'm glad to say that there are no roadblocks there. Um, but as we move to 100% um, in our network, we will get uh, a lot more questions and I'm sure that there'll be a lot more work we'll need to do there. Because we wouldn't put the green light on anything until all customers were safe and happy with our product. Um, there's additional markets that will come out of this, not, not just uh, renewable product within our gas networks. Um, we can um, create green gas um, certificates so that um, once Hydrogen Park Murray Valley is up and running, there will be a, a quantum of um, certificates available for industrial customers to use. We're nearly there with residential, but not there yet. Um, forklifts are a prime target for hydrogen mobility, um, and we've had a lot of extensive discussions in Albury Wodonga and surrounds to deliver um, tube trailer um, hydrogen to their door. Um, public refuelling, uh, there will be a couple of public refuelling stations in Albury Wodonga for uh, the likes of bus companies, truck companies and the like. Um, industrial supply, as I said earlier, we will deliver through um, tube trailer. Um, waste collection was one that I didn't mention earlier, that, that, that's a prime target for uh, um, hydrogen. Um, Hydrogen is typically uh, suitable for long haulage, heavy, heavy product, heavy, heavy uh, transport, and of course rail. And we're, we're, we're located, uh, Albury Wodonga are located alongside um, the uh, proposed inland rail project, which will be running from uh, Queensland down through Wagga, um, Albury Wodonga, and then on to Melbourne. Uh, Hydrogen Park Wagga Wagga, we're pretty excited about that. It's another project similar to the one in Albury Wodonga. And as you can see there, um, it's located in Bowman uh, within Wagga Wagga's spe special activation precinct. Now, I'll explain what a special activation precinct is. It's a, a precinct that's been uh, developed with the assistance of the New South Wales government. And in that um, precinct, um, prospective uh, industrial operators will find utilities already available to them, so it assists the development of uh, Wagga Wagga. Wagga Wagga is a strategic um, um, location for transport to Canberra, Sydney, Melbourne. That's quite a, an opportunistic um, kind of location. And you can see there, there's a lot of industry already in Bowman, and we plan to build a 10 megawatt electrolyzer there, uh, similar size to the one in Albury Wodonga possibly a 20 megawatt, depending on how much um, additional usage we might get for things like you know, mobility, for transport and that sort of thing. And it will be supplied to 23,500 customers, about half the number of customers in Albury Wodonga. But it, again, it may have a, a slightly different bend to it, that it probably will have a lot of um, gas being used in other areas, other other, other locations as well, particularly Canberra. There's discussions we're having at the moment with um, busing companies in Canberra to transport gas to Canberra from Wagga Wagga. And as you can see, commercial operation only 2025, so it's only a few years away. This is pretty exciting in terms of um, Wagga Wagga and Hydrogen Park Murray Valley had been located just down the road 
um, our intention is to assist the commercialisation of a, um, a hydrogen highway uh, out of those two projects. And, um, you know, we're excited about it. Um, uh, government are excited about it and customers are excited about it who will be able to access that hydrogen product in and around the Hume Highway. Gas blending uh, provides a large market for renewable hydrogen. 10% uh, blend will support 600, uh, up to 600 megawatts of electrolysis by 2030 uh, and um, will build scale and capability as we grow. Um, leverage to supply hydrogen mobility. Um, it's a great, as I was saying earlier, if we build, if we build these high electrolyzers a little bit larger than the immediate need, and that is the needs of domestic households and business, we can um, create things like the hydrogen highway, we can create opportunities for business to businesses to decarbonise. And most of the businesses we talk to are very excited by renewable product. Um, if you wind the clock back maybe five years, you talked about renewable product, people glazed over, um, businesses glazed over, they said, will it cost me? Um, businesses today are actually prepared to pay a premium for hydrogen product. I think most of us are, because we can see the benefits of uh, renewable hydrogen and renewable product. Uh, it's pretty efficient um, to de decarbonise gas networks because our actual networks are hydrogen ready today. They're ready to take... We've been upgrading our systems for the last 20 to 30 years and uh, they are capable of taking hydrogen. Um, so there's not a, lot of, not a lot of cost to increase the uh, capability uh, to inject hydrogen into the network. It's just marginal. Have we got any questions from any of that? Um, I went through quite a bit of information there and if you've got any Concerns or questions, please ask. There's a gentleman over there. I'll wait, I'll wait for the speaker to arrive so I can hear you. Some bloke, some bloke stood, stood up there yesterday and said that gas is gone in five years. Can you co can you comment on that, please? Um, gas gas will be here for a long, long time to come. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure what the guy's motives were uh, or what he knew. But what I know is that we're, 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 we might look like uh, it's feel, we're fairly calm on the surface, there's not much happening, but it's like a, like a duck on the lake, the legs are going like this, and we are, as you see, see we are building, building renewable capacity into our networks right now and we'll continue to do so. So um, there, I, I see no reason why uh, gas will be gone in five years' time. I mean, um, uh, I'm not quite sure, sorry, you uh, might... Yes. Uh, we'll be injecting biomethane into our next networks as well, as Michael pointed out. Um, biomethane, we're already talking to some really significant operators uh, on the injection of biomethane, and that's from things like um, uh, landfill, where uh, in the last 30 years, I'd say that a lot of uh, um, open... open um, uh, um, um, our tips, what do we call them, our, 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 yeah, our landfill sites uh, for the last 20 or 30 years have been extracting biogas from um, landfill and generating electricity and injecting it into the network. Um, a lot of those operators are coming a little bit, becoming a little bit concerned about the certainty of electricity pricing. They're trying to build a bit of stability into their business model and they're approaching us about uh, rather than generating power, uh, injecting biomethane straight into our network. So they, they take what they were burning in, in, in um, generators, the biogas, upgrade it a bit further and make it a pipeline quality gas we know, we know as biomethane and uh, assist to green our network. So it's quite exciting. 
Um, and we've, we've already started, as I said, we're in advanced discussions with a lot of big operators around that. And it's influencing efficiencies into our business too, because where we might have um, been going to put infrastructure in a certain place, where we may put it in a different place to, to work in with um, bi biomethane production. And uh, Michael has been working on a lot of uh, strategic uh, thinking in terms of how we'll actually deliver um, gas to the network from these sort of facilities. But we, we will be around for a long time. <laughs> we, uh, I, uh, we, look, you hear, you hear a lot of uh, commentary uh, in the media and so on, but um, and maybe we haven't been loud enough, um, and that may be part of the problem. But as I said, it, we may look quiet on the on the surface, but we're we're working like hell underneath. Our legs are going like hell to produce hydrogen. I need the drink. Are you lobbying politically or not? Yes, we are. Yeah, because we are. Um, as you know, some some in the political landscape have a loud voice. Yeah. Um, and usually they've got a loud voice for the minority, so... Yes. Well, look, from what I've found, um, AGIG, uh, we are, we are um, talking to, to the politicians and uh, those influences that influence politicians, and, and um, uh, we, we have support, particularly the Victorian state government, to uh, deliver hydrogen uh, renewable product to the market. There has been some talk about the narrowing of that away from residential, but um, I think the people haven't spoken yet. Uh, I think we've only heard murmurings from government, and I think that could change in time because Victorians love gas, and we have every reason to believe we can deliver gas. Um, and even under the seven star rating system, which was thought to be fairly uh, stringent against gas product. We're finding that that's not the case. We've been doing some really good work there, and we can still deliver a gas home in a seven-star home um, uh, quite easily. You'll, you'll, you'll still enjoy a gas heater, a cooker, a hot water service, whatever you like, a barbecue. We can still do that without any without any impediments, really, that I can see. You might have a couple of um, uh, solar panels on your roof, but you'll have that if you put in electricity as well. So there has been a lot of talk to deliver uh, fully uh, decarbonised electric homes, and we, we don't discourage that. We actually want to work with the electricity industry to deliver a renewable future, and I think we have to work together to do that, because um, if all the gas products were ripped out of the homes today and we had to switch over to an electric solution, the network, the electricity network is half the size it needs to be. Now, if that has to be upgraded, you and I will be paying for it through the tariff. Um, so it's not a terribly efficient way to deliver um, renewable product, is to just do it with one energy form. It should not neither be gas or electric alone, it should be both. We should be working together to do that. Are there any more questions? Any more questions for Adrian? No? Okay, thank you so much for your time today. It's been lovely to have you here. Um, really insightful. It's great to see that the Australian Gas Network is doing a lot for thank, us. Thank you, and thanks to the audience. Thank, thank you thank so you. much. Um, perfect. I'll take that one from you. Um, so now we're just going to take a little uh, 15, well, 10 to 15 minute break, and then we're going to be having our final speaker for thank today. You. It's going to be starting at 2 p.m., so please do come back. Um, and we're going to be talking about materials for fencing. So please come back at two. Thank you so much.